Hello and welcome to Southampton Vampire by Night's Guide to the Mind's Eye Theatre Rules. I am so excited to share with you a recent character creation session held between By Night Studios lead writer Jimmy and Southampton Vampire by Night's content creator Stuart using the brand new V2 rules. The character being discussed in this video was created beforehand to allow the main focus of this video to be about adapting it with some of the amazing content found within the new rulebook. If you want to know more about how to create a character using the Mind's Eye Theatre rules, then please check out one of our two character creation videos, the links to which can be found in the comments below. So, let's get things started. Stuart? if you'd like to introduce yourself. So, uh, my name's Stuart. I'm one of the content creators, um, NPC creators and plot writers for Silent and Vampire by Night. Um, I've created several of the NPCs that we will be using in our game. And today I've got the opportunity to, to go through some new rules uh, in content creation with one of the guys from By Night Studios, uh, Jimmy. I'm Jimmy from By Night Studios, uh, lead developer. And uh, today I'm excited to help Stuart uh, make a new Tremere PC. I'm excited for the help because this is entirely new for me. It's new stuff, new rules, and I'm always interested in things that are new to the game because I've been through the rules. I've played Mind's Eye Theatre for a number of times over the uh, many iterations of the game, um, and there's always something new that makes me excited when I want to create a new character, and that's the kind of the key thing here is, like, what can I do that's going to get me excited to create a new character? Great. We've got a lot of new material coming out. Uh, did you have any ideas for uh, what you wanted your Tremere to do? Well, I've done a lot of Tremere. Um, they are one of my go-to clans. I'd say 50% of the clan characters I've played or NPC'd have been Tremere um, ever since you know, a long time. Anyway, um, I've done a variety of things with Tremere um, from you know, Path of Mars, um, Elemental Mastery and stuff like that. I have a character idea at the moment that we're using with Path of Elemental Mastery. He's a craftsperson. Um, he's, um, he crafts talismans, uh, focuses, and sort of old-fashioned items for Tremere. The reason he's been embraced is so they can maintain his skills and unique sort of a handcrafted way of working with wood and other objects. Um, and so this is the kind of guy. His name's Toby. He is um, a crafter, and it's looking at skills that would give him an edge um, in maintaining his ability to be a unique person within the, well, the Tremere of our domain. Gotcha. Okay, uh, well, we've got uh, three additional paths of thaumaturgy that we're introducing in the next book. Uh, how about I tell you about them? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so uh, we're reintroducing Green Path in the next book. Cool. Uh, Green Path works to keep the user healthy uh, with root attacks that grapple. Uh, debuffs that lower the enemy's uh, magic resistance, and the ability to manipulate and grow plants that provide various benefits. We're also uh, bringing back Neptune's Might, and that gives you power over water. Uh, you yep. can use it to lower your target's initiative with freezing attacks, dehydrate their blood, and keep yourself safe through defensive powers and healing. Uh, it's flowing and dynamic, and in this version, the powers do different things with successive uses. There's also uh, the all-new path of Callistokinesis, uh, that's based on the movements of the planets of the, and the stars, astrology, and fate. Uh, you can use it to, to control combats with gravity wells, disrupt your opponents with lethargy, or uh, bind your target's fate to theirs so that their debuff attacks uh, also affect them. Interesting. I can't say that the, the third one, I mean, I'm not even going to say that word, so I can pass <laughs> on that one straight up, but it sounds very interesting, very nice. Uh, Green Path, again, is a very nice discipline, but the guy we're looking at, Toby, here, he works with wood, that's been taken from trees. So I think kind of like yeah. Green Path, kind of the, the opposite of where he'd be. He's like making living plants work for him is different. He works with you know, chunks of plant that have been cut off of it and such. However, Neptune's might works for, for us. I mean, Southampton's a port city. It rains all the time in the UK. Neptune's might water. It works for me. Um, and it's again, that's a path I've never used with any of my NPCs or PCs previous to now. Um, did it work 
concurrent to uh, the way it used to work in sort of tabletop in that you said it's like a fluid thing do i need water to use this power all the time do i need a source of water by character it's it's a little different uh there's uh, um, unless specifically mentioned none of the powers need water anymore i mean it's magic after all That's so cool. uh you know it, it should just appear i mean a fire can just appear out of nowhere there's no reason we can't conjure you know uh, icy tendrils and all sorts of other things so. yeah cool all right, well, let me tell you how it works. Uh, so as mentioned, uh, unless specifically mentioned, it does, uh, the path does not require an existing source of water. Good. Uh, you know, second thing is that, uh, as mentioned, all of the powers in this path do different things when you use them multiple times. So uh, to tell you how that works, let's go over the first power, which is Water Mastery. Okay. Okay. So level one power, Water Mastery. You activate this power by spending a point of blood near a body of water, such as a pond, river, or the ocean. After spending uh, the first point of blood, you can alter the water's temperature, freezing it or bringing it to a boil. After spending another point of blood, you can commune with the body of water, uh, causing it to show you an event that happened near it or uh, reveal something that's submerged within it. If you spend a third point of blood, you can uh, animate the water, causing it to attack targets and capsize boats. Quite useful. So it's got... Um... Well, it's uniquely different powers. The longer you're spending using your magic on this one body of water, the more varied the actual abilities you can apply with it are. So, so literally, I can evaporate a puddle by making it boil away, or I can reveal what was happening in that alleyway, you know, five minutes before I arrived by looking in the puddles on the floor and stuff. Right, and, right. Yeah, I can literally start drawing water in and like water tendrils or water bending if you want to bring it to sort of like other sort of tropes, like a water bend with my uh, Tremere, which is pretty awesome, actually. Yeah, okay. So what do I do? What can I do sort of past level one? Because level one's already given me three options, which is very cool. Sure, sure. What do I get to do next? Yeah, uh, all right. Level two is Prison of Water. Uh, that is a physical debuff that lowers your target's movement and initiative. When you use it, tendrils of frigid water, they manifest and they uh, attack the target of your choice. The first time you successfully use a power on a target gives them a minus five penalty to initiative, and it limits their movement to a maximum of three steps, so they can't go beyond the normal allotted movement. The second time you affect the target with the power, uh, the, in the initiative penalty increases to a minus 10, and the target is limited to a maximum of two steps per movement action. Now, the third time you hit your target with this, uh, the tendrils freeze. Your target's initiative is limited to three, and they can take uh, only a single step per movement action. Okay, so it's a debuff. It's basically affecting my opponent, slowing them down, giving me time to do things, keep a distance between me and them, because from what I know from most of the thaumaturgy I've ever used, I don't want to be in face-to-face -face contact with my opponent if I've had to use thaumaturgy against them. I want them to be the other side of the room so I can do everything else I want to. Um, I like the fact that it doesn't reduce their speed to zero. It still gives my opponent, the player who I'm interacting with, they've still got that option to continue to treat, to keep coming at me. Um, so, you know, it's not like I've held you in place, just let everyone else do what they want to you. They've got options. They're slowed down, but they've still got the chance to actually do something. So, yeah, I like that. Right, it's, right. An, it's a different way of debuffing someone without giving them... Well, they, they've still got agency as a player, which is good. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's good against Celerity users. Uh, as an aside, uh, the power will work... Uh, as part of the power, it'll work against uh, characters in misform. So it can even uh, slow down those those pesky gangrel when they uh, when they try to escape as well. That's quite rude because yeah, <laughs> I was going to say mist form is water. So yeah, actually, why not? I suppose right, um, right. yeah, mist is water. That works fine by me. That's really good actually. Yeah, the amount of people going like oh mist form, I escape. No, you don't. Tough luck. <laughs> or not not as quickly. Not as quickly. Not as quickly they, no, they can escape yeah. one step at a time. No, that's cool. So. Okay, so developing the power, we've gone from looking at water, manipulating the temperature of water, watery tendrils, frozen tendrils that can hold my opponent in place. Where do we go now? What's the, like? What's our next level? Level three, when we're going up in this discipline? Sure, sure. Level three is moment of reflection, and that's a healing power that channels uh, the curative properties of water to, uh, to restore the body. Uh, this one works a little bit differently. Normally, uh, when you spend a blood to use it in most cases, uh, you spend one point of blood and it'll heal you for two levels of normal damage. But the third time that you've used it in a night, you have an epiphany and it can heal you for two points of aggravated damage instead. Okay. And then afterwards it goes back to healing for two points of normal damage. So uh, there's some decision making that goes into it. If you, you may, uh, if you think you're going to encounter some aggravated damage, you may just want to use it twice just to sort of prime the third application 
or you may hold back on using it, knowing that you only get the aggravated uh, heal once per night, sort of waiting for that. So uh, a lot of decision making that, that can go into that. Okay, so I've got healing and unique, I mean, I can use this power in combat, I can take actions in combat to heal damage I've taken, which is nice, or like you said, I can come out of combat after a fight, heal up, restore some aggravated damage I've taken from a fight, and then be fresh, ready to deal with whatever else comes along next. So I like it, it's got a bit of utility to it. Can I use it multiple times in a night? Can I go, oh, I've used it three times now? Or is it, like you said, every other time I use it after the initial three, it's just two heals every time, no more. I can't just stack three, aggravated heal, stack three more, <laughs> aggravated heal. Just, I mean, uh, just one, one epiphany per night. But you, okay. get, uh, you get the normal healing uh, you know, better at a better rate than normal blood healing. You can use that throughout the evening. Yeah, I was gonna say it's a lot. It's a lot better than normal rate of healing, which is quite cool. Because you know, I mean, I'm still using blood to activate the power, mm. like most thaumaturgy, but I'm getting better healing back from it. So actually, yeah, no, I like that. That's very good. So we've got a very utilitarian power where we can do multiple things. Um, it's not just I steal your blood, I burn your blood, I boil your blood, I read your blood. It's it's I've got lots of utility on this. So mm. what can I do at level four with this power? Sure. All right. Level four is flowing wall, and this one's a defensive power. So uh, you activate it, and it can it creates this swirling vortex of water that uh, swirls around and defends you, and it gives you a plus two bonus to your dive skill. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that that's just, of course, with the with the first activation. If you use the power the second time, the berry intensifies and it increases to a plus four bonus to your dodge. Now, if you use it a third time, the barrier freezes and hardens. So it, it no longer provides a dodge bonus, but uh, it uh, it is able to absorb the health levels of incoming attacks. And then if you use the power additional times beyond that, you can sort of restore the barrier by freezing it again. So uh, in this with this one, you might uh, you might decide that you just want the plus four bonus to dodge and leave it at that, or you may decide, okay, I really want to get to the uh, I really want to get to the health levels and uh, and just rush straight towards that too. So. You know, again, this is this is a path that very much rewards good decision making. Again, it's utility because again, I can go with I've got a hard fight. I want to be harder to hit. I'm going to use the dodge ability. I'm going to try not to be hit in combat. Or if I've got a long drawn out fight where my opponent may not be doing much damage, I'm going to go up to the level three, use it like a blative armor, and just keep operating it every time. I need to have that little bit of shield, so I'm not going to get pounded by this guy who's just wailing on me with a fist and stuff. So yeah, I've. Again, it's a nice utility power, how you use it. Like you say, you've got to make those decisions. You've got to say, okay, I'm going to go right to the max and spend that time powering up, or I can take it right at the beginning and just activate it at the start of combat and just keep myself a little bit more nimble on my feet. And I'm assuming with these powers, I don't have to activate them every round. I can make those choices to activate it. Like maybe early on, if the fight becomes drawn out, I can activate it a second time. I've got control of that as a player, and I, I like that utility. It's a very nice sort of, it's a nice decision-making process. It gives me yeah, choices. Yeah, exactly. I like choices. Yeah, uh, use these powers. Use a different power. Uh, stop at the first level, the second level. Uh, race to the third. Whatever works best for you. Yeah. Okay. So, what's the top? What's the highest rank that I can do with this power? What's the ma If I make this my primary path, if I'm all about Neptune's might and, and water bending, because I'm now a Tremere water bender, <laughs> I'm, I'm basically surrounding myself in bubbles of water. I'm, I'm entrapping my enemies in bubbles of water. I'm using watery tendrils to smack everyone around the room. Uh, what's the What's the ultimate thing I can do with this power? Okay. So the level five power is dehydrate. Uh, you may remember dehydrate uh, previously, it uh, drains and evaporates your target's blood and puts them in danger of running out. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> like the other powers, this one changes the more they use it. First time you use the power, it'll drain four points of the target's blood. The second time you use it on a target, uh, it drains half of the target's remaining blood, round it down. The third time you use it, the target will lose all but her last three points of blood. Uh, and then if you use it again, it's much harder to get additional blood. It only drains one point of blood per activation. So uh, when you think about the rate of this power, just think about squeezing like a sponge. So you get a, you get a little bit at first, then you get a lot, and then it kind of slows down as you're sort of twisting and trying to suck the last little bits of, of life uh, out of your target. Yeah, that's just rude, frankly. <laughs> but again, uh, if, I'm the power, if I'm the person using the power, I don't mind it being a rude power because I'm wanting to be effective against my enemies. I want, you know, um, automatically, yeah, I can easily see myself building a character just around this path and power alone because it's got so many different things from investigative abilities with, you know, scrying through water, defensive abilities, 
offensive abilities, um, debuffs. Um, I mean, it's it's like yeah, it, it's got that kind of like almost sort of like a bubble paladin kind of thing, whereby I'm like, oh, I'm debuffing you, I'm buffing myself, I'm healing my damage, I'm me- I'm messing you up with dehydration. I've got a lot of utility here, and I could build a character that could go in multiple directions with this sort of ability and power, which is really cool because. You know, I, I like having agency where I, you know, it's like potent. I hit you. It's really hard. I hit you harder. I hit you even harder. Oh, I hit you really, really hard. And so it's like, I move fast. I move faster. I move a bit faster than that. Oh, I'm really, really fast. This is, you don't know what to expect from this power. You know, anyone who, anyone who sees this, they're not going to see the same application of this every time. And, you know, because each, each level of the power, if you've got these cumulative abilities where I can stack it on top of each other, every level of the power is like a mini discipline on its own. So I'm like, yeah, I've got five levels of this discipline, but within that discipline, I've kind of got three levels of sub levels of my discipline that I can activate and stack up. I like it a lot. It's yeah, it's definitely a grower. I think this is um, a winning discipline as far as I'm concerned, realistically. Oh, good. We hope you play nice with it. Uh, (laughs) No. (laughs) No. Well, yeah, we we, uh, want to make something that's like water. It's fluid. It's dynamic. Uh, It builds slowly, but then becomes really powerful, if not unstoppable, once it has a chance to get moving. Yeah. No, I wouldn't play nice with this. This this would be a, this would be a discipline I'd basically use. Yeah, I'm like this is a Tremere who uses this discipline who doesn't need to be you know messed around. This is, yeah. I mean, yes, you could create a character that uses this entirely in a defensive way as well. You know, it's all about like actually, I just throw up my wall of water to get out of here and concentrate on running away while slowing my opponent down, and it works in that format as well. But yeah, there's so many things about this that like that work from a from, yeah, from a variety of points of view and and like i said southampton's a port city having an ability that works with water very themic for our area um you know a lot of the npcs we've created are themed around you know navy or or merchant navy or ex corsair pirates and stuff like that. we've got a kind of a naval theme to the city um and so for us neptunes might sound like a brilliant discipline to a, you know, a brilliant thaumaturgical path to put into the game um as an option for Tremere players because themically it fits with what we do you know rain and drizzle all the way down the windows and stuff like that and we've got Tremere who start flinging water around and you don't want to go out on a rainy day <laughs> so yeah I like the, I like That's this good. path a lot it's a very good path it's very very cool okay uh how about some rituals yes I like rituals as well um I've again um if we're looking at character stuff I had a Tremere um a while ago long time ago um, and I was the first player to start using rituals seriously in the game. Everyone else was all about disciplines, and I started using rituals. And then it wasn't until I started using combinations of rituals to to do things that kind of break the way things should work. Players were like, you can't do that. And I'm like, yes, I can. And if I stack that with this and this, so yeah, I I love rituals. No one ever takes them seriously, whereas I always kind of like see the value in something because again, for Tremere, you want that toolbox of options. You want that. You don't know what I'm going to do. You don't know what rituals I've got. And I always love a new book of rituals because, frankly, new rituals, players haven't seen them all. So players get surprised. And I like to surprise players with rituals. So, you know, lay them on me. Okay. Uh, well, let's see. So as part of the, the new book, we're introducing a total of 50 brand new rituals into the system. Cool. Uh, <clears throat> and there's a couple that I think might appeal to, uh, to your build and what you might want to do. Uh, one of them is uh, Nemocene Crystal. Okay. Uh, that's a Tremere only ritual. As part of the new book, we're introducing clan specific rituals. Good, good. Each, I like that. Each of the blood magic clans will have uh, five rituals that are exclusive wholly to them. Other clans can't use them. So the Tremere get theirs, uh, the Zemisi, the Asimites, and the Fathers of Set. They, they all okay. have their own set of rituals that, uh, that are wholly theirs and, and very much in theme for them. One of the Tremere ones is this one, Nemustine Crystal. Uh, it works with Forgetful Mind, allowing you to extract a memory and transfer it into a crystal. Uh, the memory can't be recovered until the crystal is broken. Meanwhile, uh, any character with Spirit's Touch can view the memory within. And uh, I think there's a lot of different uses you might be able to use for it. For one, uh, you could hold on to precious memories as collateral, perhaps uh, adding them to your, your repertoire of trinkets. Uh, and there are also more nefarious uses also, such as uh, storing incriminating memories uh, for, uh, for later recovery. Again, I like the idea of uh, being able to take sort of like the memories from people and go, okay, so you did this thing. You're a very naughty person. Uh, I'll take that memory away so you don't remember you did it. Uh, no one else knows you did it. But if you ever cross me, I'm going to let everyone know about it. 
yeah, I kind of I kind of get that. That's yeah, a manipulative discipline. I quite like that. The ability to steal memories, use them as uh, bargaining chips. Can I? So people can read them with spirits touch. So I am assuming not only I, as the person who's stolen the memory within the monomic crystal, as you put it, I could give that to someone else and say, "Here you go. You want you want the inside skinny. Here's this this memory, Spoiler. like a like a." like a data stick, like a memory stick of other people, like a literal memory stick. Here we go. Have this memory stick of all the Primogen's darkest, deepest thoughts. There you go. There you go. Yeah. I, uh, gosh, I had a friend of mine, uh, one time at, at a LARP, uh, she went around and she, uh, she would ask people, Hey, what is your most favorite memory from your mortal days? You know? And, and sometimes they would think, and they would say, well, gosh, you know, there was, there was a sunny day where, where I met my fiance and we had a picnic together in a, in a, in a, sunny field and it was just the most perfect day and everything was wonderful and it was the best day of my life and she would go uh-huh uh-huh forget the mind <laughs> and uh and, and just rip it right out of them uh, yeah very very terrible person <clears throat> but uh yeah with this uh you can uh, you can take those memories you can hold on to them uh use them as bargaining chips use, chips, use them as blackmail uh, whatever whatever works for you can well i don't know i was gonna say can i implant these memories in other people with higher levels of dominate that would be really handy uh, pulse, not, pulse not, just, memories. not not just yet. I mean, otherwise we get into uh, complex uh, scenarios where you know so and so is someone else's memories and and all that. But you can of course yeah. you can always do that with regular forgetful mind is to uh, uh, plant them. Yeah, in all true. Way. I can play with memories that way and just falsify memories and other ways around. Okay, so I can think of several different uses for the um, ritual: using precious memories, using them for bargaining chips, stealing them from people, um, or just taking them away. So. Like you said, we can remove an incriminating uh, piece of evidence. So if someone else goes in there, that person's completely innocent because we've got that memory. They no longer have it. So, right. yeah, I like that one. Rituals work on levels. So you get more powerful rituals as you go as you go deeper into being a Tremere. Uh, what are some of the more powerful things my Tremere could do? Sure. So one of the new rituals uh, that we're adding at level three is called uh, Thaumaturgic Metabolism. And this is a good survivor power. So uh, maybe uh, some angry customers upset that you've put their precious memories uh, for sale in your store are, uh, are, are looking to have a few choice words with you. Uh, the way this power works is that whenever you use any power from the, uh, from the path of blood, no matter what it is, you automatically heal one point of damage. So if using theft of uh, Vitae on somebody, you will automatically heal a point of damage. If you're using Cauldron of Blood on somebody, you will also heal a point of damage. Uh, it's, it's a good way to economize your blood spend while you're, uh, while you're using your other forms of thaumaturgy. Yeah, so passively, I am, I'm using a power, um, and I'm not having to spend blood on healing during that combat round if I've been hit by something or I've taken previous damage in the uh, evening because I'm automatically using my powers and my metabolism is so good, I'm healing as I'm doing it, which reminds me of the old... Um, quieter's power whereby it's like i activate celerity as an asamite and then eventually i get it all back because i've spent the blood in a different way so yeah again i've got this very cool power it only works with path of blood so that's a restriction so you know it's, it's not i can start pumping out any discipline power and using this so there's there's a nice little restriction on it but it is a very utility power that keeps you know that keeps you going longer you know, costing you less blood. It's 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 a nice sort of like economy based power. You get what you get back. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've got a suite of rituals uh, as part of the new book. Uh, each of them enhances one of the uh, one of the previous uh, books' thaumaturgy powers. So, uh, the uh, <clears throat> so lure of flames has one. Uh, Movement of the mind has one. Weather oh. control has one. Just to give a little bit more to some of the classic powers in the game. Okay, that's cool. So they're complementary to previous existing thaumaturgical paths. So if you've got that path, there's something new for you as a character to go, actually, I've now got a little bit more I can do with this and watch out you haven't seen this happen yet. So I like that. That's very, very cool. So what's some of the top level ritual stuff I can do? What's my level five rituals? Okay, so uh, at the top end, we've got the ritual for you. It's called Fell Incantation. The way that ritual works is you cast it, and then uh, for the remainder of the night, the first point of damage from all of your thaumaturgy powers is unsoakable. So if you deal three points of damage, the first point is unsoakable. If you deal one point of damage, the first point is unsoakable. The downside, though, is that all of your thaumaturgy for the remainder of the night is always going to be supernatural in nature, <laughs> very likely masquerade bre breaking. So if you're uh, calling up fog, it's going to be purple and swirling or, or just something that's just purely unnatural. 
uh, if you're using lure flames, uh, maybe they're blue or or uh, or yellow or something that just uh, something that just does not normally happen. Uh, just as kind of a drawback to uh, to the power. It also, lets people know that they probably shouldn't mess with you. I was going to say, if I'm already using thaumaturgy out and about on the streets, I've probably broken the masquerade anyway. So you know, <laughs> having purple flames, yeah, a bit late to be worried about that, really. Um, no, that's very very cool because again, I've got this armor piercing ability to go okay i'm gonna just do damage it doesn't matter how tough you are it doesn't matter how how strong you are i'm just gonna keep putting holes in you until until this combat ends which is really really good and you know again had i had that sort of thing available i've got a couple of npcs i could have basically just made even bigger holes and players with um you know, <laughs> not that i always do that with my Tremere, but you know it's it's a thing anyway i like the power it's a i mean it's a top level ritual so it's not something you're going to get straight away at character creation you're not going to start rocking up going with your brand new Tremere going bow 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 I'm putting massive blood magic holes in people it's something to aim towards but it's a nice payoff at the end as well because you know stacking fell incantation and stacking thaumaturgic uh, metabolism and suddenly my you know theft of vita is like a blood machine gun <laughs> <laughs> just putting holes in anybody who gets in my way there you go. No, you, never, no. you never let the Tremere get too big in your game. It's just a bad decision. That's the mistake the players always make. Is like they just don't pay any attention to us until we're too powerful. Sorry, but you know, I just I like Tremere. They're they're my go-to. It's all good. So we've got some rituals. We've got a new discipline path. They've all got a lot of usage. I can see a lot of benefits for them. So there's got to be some flaws. What 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 are we going to get to the? What, where's the punishing part of being Tremere here? Where where are my flaws that are going to sort of like you know? You've got to do something that balances out all this super-powered magical thaumaturgical goodness. Sure. So we're introducing clan flaws as part of the new book. Uh, these are special flaws for each of the clans and independent bloodlines, uh, which play into the classic weaknesses and the quirks. And I think you'll like some of the Tremere ones. Uh, the one-point flaw for the Tremere is called spell components. Okay. And with this, with this flaw, you find yourself constantly amassing spell components to power your magic. <laughs> Uh, if you don't have access to them, your thaumaturgy is a little bit harder to cast. But in most cases, you just have to spend a downtime action every month gathering them together and making sure that you have them on your person uh, at any given time. Okay, so again, with the character I'm looking at here being a craftsperson who makes talismans and focuses, mm -hmm. it would be very good for him to be of the opinion that actually I need these focuses to use my magic. I can't use my thaumaturgy without them because his entire existence is based on the idea that they make the thaumaturgy work better so for him it's a natural flaw to have that not only is a flaw that gives him uh, something that's you know that's a bit of a drawback but it's also flavorful to the character it's not just oh i've taken this because it gets me some freebies this is actually something that has a reasonable character background build around it which is very nice i like that sort of thing with my flaws so are there any other things we can uh, look at Sure. Uh, the two-point flaw is called pedantic, uh, and that may sound a little bit familiar uh, to, uh, to certain Tremere players. Uh, with this flaw, uh, you feel it next to impossible to withhold knowledge on any subject that you have expertise in. Uh, fortunately, this does not extend to clan secrets or sensitive information, uh, but if somebody is talking, for example, about a subject that you have uh, dots of uh, lore in, you cannot help yourself but chime in uh, with additional points of clarification, uh, with with other details, correcting inaccuracies and that sort of thing. Uh, some Shamir players may be doing this for free already, so uh, they may want to consider this flaw. Yeah, I know a number of Shamir players, and I'm not naming them, who have basically sat there and gone, no, that's not how Blood Thaumaturgy works, and you're sitting there going like, no, you don't tell not them how really, it works at really, all. Tell us, tell us. <laughs> really, why are you telling them these things? Oh, yeah, no, I, I've... Yeah, I've met a few Tremere players who are, who are like that. Yeah. The unfortunate need to just correct everybody about everything you know about everything you've ever done in your existence. But yeah, it's definitely an odd one. Um, so have we got anything above that? Because, I mean, like you said, those are flavorful NPC sort of flaws or PC flaws. Um, like you said, some Tremere already do that. They're already constantly going on about what, they're, what they do, what they can do. So let's look at what we can take now. Something more punishing than just talking about how cool being a Tremere is and also carrying around a bag of components. Sure. Uh, so we brought back uh, the flaw twice bound to the council. Uh, and this is uh, this was a lot more common in the, in the older days of the Tremere where uh, upon the embrace, you would have to drink this uh, sort of cocktail of the transubstantiated blood of the uh, of the uh, inner circle. So with this flaw, you're two steps bound to the Tremere Council, and for the purposes of this flaw, it counts as having a two-step 
blood bond toward any of your duly appointed superiors. So yeah, that's a mechanically more punishing sort of floor. It gives you the sort of situation whereby you're going to be in line with doing what your clan wants you to do because actually your your blood is inclined to follow the orders of your clan a lot easier. Um, you know, because you're in that pyramid structure, you're doing what you're told from the top down. Um, so yeah, for a younger Tremere player, that's kind of actually, you know, it's it's giving them game because they're going to get told what to do and they've got you know, not much more than they go, I'm going to go along and do that. Um, yeah, no, I like it. It's it's also a nice callback to the previous sort of system of the game's rules where when the, you know, when the Tremere have this very structured point of view on how everything runs and what everyone does, you know. I like it. I like it a lot. So if we review the sort of materials we've gone over, we've got a new discipline path, some new rituals, some new flaws. Um, we've got a lot of thoughts about what, well, I've got a lot of thoughts about what I can do with these to build my character, how I can put them together in combinations to make a character who initially is a simple woods crafter who makes magical talismans into someone who actually has a, a suit of abilities that make him a very unique, very distinct character that he can do things, you know, within the set that we've got here just discussed. This character is capable of doing a lot of different things, and I, I'm, I'm really liking that. So I'd say I'm very, very looking forward to seeing what else you've got for Thaumaturgy out there and what else the Tremere can do, as well as those other clans that also practice blood magic. You know, they can get some stuff as well. But the Tremere stuff, very interested, very much interested in that. Great, yeah. Uh, like I mentioned, you know, there's still the two other paths. There's uh, 50 new rituals. There's clan rituals, uh, and uh, you know, and the flaws also. So definitely a lot to explore. I look forward to exploring a lot more of that in future. Then, thank you very much for giving me a sort of like a quick look at what you know what I can do with my Tremere to uh, necessarily not be a punishing, terrible Tremere player, but also be a, a useful, helpful Tremere player who uh, gets things done for the betterment of everyone else who is not my enemy. Good. Well, glad to help. Thank you very much for having me. That's been a pleasure talking to you. I've enjoyed every minute of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stuart and Jimmy. I hope you all enjoyed the video and are looking forward to our next one. Yep, that's right. This is just the first video in a series of premieres from the new V2 rulebook. Expect to see many more just like this one on the channel, along with some behind the scenes chats. If you would like to support this channel, then please pop on over to our Patreon page and also please don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. Speaking of comments, if you have any questions regarding the material covered in this video, then please pop them in the comments below and we'll do what we can to answer your questions. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all again soon. Bye.